Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. As many of you already know, I absolutely love talking about eyeshadows on this channel right here. We talk a lot about eyeshadows and I just love talking about eyeshadow palettes especially, but I will say that no matter how much I love eyeshadows, there are a few eyeshadow palettes and there are a few eyeshadows just in general that I may or may not have liked or even loved at a certain point, but like right now at the moment, I'm just not into. And there are a few palettes in front of me. In fact, I have five different palettes in front of me, all of which have definitely lost their sparkle. These are all eyeshadow palettes that I'm just not using right now. There is hope for some of these and for others, there is none whatsoever. Whatsoever. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. So the very first item is a palette that will definitely surprise a great many of you. And I will say right off the bat, there is hope for this palette. I do think that I will go back to using this palette, but it's just like right now at the moment, this palette has just lost lost its shine, lost its sparkle, lost its luster pretty much. I'm talking about the Dose of Colors Blushing Berries palette. And Yes, this palette will probably surprise a great deal, a great deal, a great many of you because like this palette like in and of itself is so beautiful. I've taken out the brush and I have the brush in my brush collection and I use it all the time. Um, but this like palette is like a cur curated selection of berry tones and that sounds absolutely just yummy, absolutely just amazing and I actually do use this palette quite a fair amount. I use these two shades a lot. But see, the thing is about having like a curated selection of colors is that a lot of times you don't necessarily reach for that specific palette unless you want to go for that monochromatic kind of look. At least that's my experience. And looking at this palette, I see like just a selection of colors that is so beautiful. But then again, I can't necessarily bring myself to create a lot of like varied looks with this specific palette. And recently, I've just stopped uh, reaching for this palette altogether. I do see that like changing. I really do like this palette. The quality is absolutely beautiful. But at the moment, this palette is just like not it for me. And of course, that will probably change because the palette itself is absolutely beautiful, but right now it's definitely losing its shine. This next palette is a palette that, um, I keep thinking that I will declutter this palette, but then again, I always persuade myself not to. <laughs> this is the Naked Smoky Palette by Urban Decay. Just beautiful packaging, first off. The packaging is so pretty. I remember when this palette first came out, everybody was going like head over heels, bananas over this packaging because it's like so smoky and like it feels like really just like solid and really beautiful and the lettering is like really nice. I feel like if I ever like launched a palette, I would love to have like packaging similar to this. Please, maybe not. But um, this palette inside, I mean, you have like essentially every single cool tone neutral you could possibly desire. And there's so many like just different shades in here. But see, the thing is, Urban Decay shimmers, they're not like bad, but they're just not like, they're not impactful. They're kind of like, they remind me of like a film of shimmer. And for me, when I look at this palette, like I think number one, like the most amazing thing ever about this palette is the shimmers. Like that's the thing that like attracts me to this palette, specifically these two shades. And I'm sorry, but I want a shimmer that's like more opaque and more like impactful. So that part of the palette I'm not into. Um, I will say that one shade that I absolutely love in this palette is High which is like this color right here. It is like your beautiful, like just, just shimmery, reflective highlight color. It is so nice. I really should get back into using that specific shade, but like this entire palette, I mean, it's just, it's not a palette that really inspires me that much. And I feel like that's why I don't reach for it because I do like using a lot of like vivid and a lot of like really just bright colors. So I feel like that might be it as well, but I haven't used this palette in such a long time. And I feel like it's just because like this palette fails to inspire me. And I feel like with each and every one of these palettes actually that I'm mentioning today, it will be so great. Well, probably not each and every single one of these palettes. There will be some coming up that I'm just not interested in. But I feel like with so many of these palettes that I'm mentioning today, I feel like it would be so great if I could just like think of a way to pair 
these palettes with some other exciting palettes that would sort of motivate me to use these palettes because a lot of these colors are just really beautiful and a lot of these palettes are great but like I just I don't want to use them for whatever reason moving on whoo I am, I feel so bad about this <laughs> the ColourPop Mar palette their excuse or their sorry um, excuse for a cool toned blue palette. <laughs> I am so glad that ColourPop decided to do their monochromatic palettes because those are so much better than whatever this was. And I'm like, why did I even buy this? That's like what's going through my head every single time I look at this palette. And yes, there are some beautiful cool tones in here. Three to be exact. And those are the only three that I use. Like Those are the only three colors in this palette that I actually use. And it's like frustrating because like I look at this palette and I think, okay, these are gold colors, like warm tone gold colors and neutral colors in a palette. And I don't use those kinds of colors. And it's kind of like, yeah, like I don't, I don't know what to do with this palette kind of you know because like whenever i use this palette i use it in conjunction with other palettes or like with multiple other palettes because like that's the that's the only way i can bring myself to create like an interesting look with this palette in my opinion and yeah i mean i have an entire playlist dedicated to this palette uh, and all the other tutorials that i've done with this palette so it's, it's not a bad palette it's just not the best and I'm sorry but whenever I'm doing my makeup I want to reach for palettes that genuinely inspire me and this doesn't it just it doesn't and I'm sorry to say it but like that's I, I would go as far as to say that this is like one of the palettes that I actually my stomach just rumbled this is one of the palettes that I actually kind of regret yeah let's talk about the Kat Von D shade and light eye palette and I just dropped it I honestly just dropped it do I care not really. Um, first of all, Neutral City. Second of all, um, Kat Von D. Third of all, uh, doesn't inspire me in the, slightest, in the slightest. When this palette first came out, it was like super revolutionary, in my opinion, because like this was the first time that somebody had like just uh, brought forward the idea of contouring and eyeshadow just like meshed into one because this like is the shade uh, and light eye palette so it's kind of like a contouring and highlighting palette for the eyes and this was one of those palettes that everybody was obsessed with and I was as well for a short time because you have like these different quads you have your warm tone quad you have your uh, cool tone quad like cool tone smoky quad and then you have your uh, neutral one so everybody was like so into this palette everybody loved it me included this was one of my well, like sorry this was one of my first eyeshadow palettes that I purchased but like now I'm looking at it and I'm like this is so boring and like I can't think of any kind of interesting look I can create with this palette so I keep it because there are a few shades in here that I think are relatively okay and this is kind of like one of those like classic palettes and I will admit, I kind of like their like packaging with this one. I don't know. I might just be doing like an entire like palette declutter video that might be coming up. There is a major declutter about to happen with my collection. I'm about to downsize a lot. So I feel like in that sort of situation, this might just go because like, I just, I don't see Kat Von D like as a brand that I want to use that much. And I also don't see like this palette as a palette that I want to use that much. So that's my opinion. This next palette is probably going to be a big surprise. <laughs> and um, oh my gosh, I can probably spend uh, quite a bit of time ranting about this palette and praising it at the same time, weirdly. The Subculture palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I don't know how I feel about this palette. There, I said it. Um, I genuinely don't know how I feel about this palette because this is a palette that is so beautiful to look at. It is simply just amazing. Like, it is a beautiful palette to look at. Like, just look at all these. Look at 
let's just look at this like it's a colorful palette number one number two it has so many like truly unique shadows in here but this palette like it makes me like it reminds me of like how bad i am at eyeshadow and i don't know maybe it's just me like and my talentless nature when it comes to eyeshadow and makeup in general because I, I i know that i'm not perfect or maybe it's just this palette for a while i was like okay let me just use one of these shades at a time for each of my looks and it will be okay because i'll be able to inject like the uniqueness of this palette into an eye look but at the same time i don't necessarily have to be left with anything that looks too messy like i can still use this palette in my looks without it turning like bad but like i recently i think it was like a will i buy it video or i think it was like, just like a video tutorial or something i used one of these colors i can't remember which and i put it on my eyelid and i looked it looked like a patchy mess and it was i was editing that video and i was like oh my god in this video i look like i'm terrible at eyeshadow because of how patchy this looks and i Tried, okay, like I literally like tried and I, this was the oh, like this was one shade that I used from this palette and all the other shades in that eye look were tried and true excellent eyeshadow shades and This one shade from this palette Made my look awful like it was like it looked like a patchy mess and it looked so bad and I'm just like oh. like I like, I'm not gonna give up by the way. I'm not gonna give up with this palette because I like the color story that much I know there I said it. I like the color story and it's clouding my mind But if the color story was slightly different to this I would have like just thrown this palette into the bin because it just like frustrates me so much The only reason subculture is in my collection right now at the moment is because some of these shades are absolutely beautiful But if it wasn't for like the inclusion of like about six of these shades I would have gotten rid of this palette long ago. This palette is like a temperamental child that you love, but you just can't handle. So it's kind of like, I want to keep you, but you make me sad. And those are the uh, palettes that basically, like, that I pretty much loved, that I really liked at one point, but right now they just have really just lost their sparkle for me. The Dose of Colors palette is one that I definitely will go back to using because the quality is great. It's just that it's just that at the moment it's difficult for me to use. But yeah, those are my opinions on these palettes that have just lost their sparkle just a tiny big bit. But yes, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Bye guys.